Hi everybody, my name's Rob and welcome back to another episode of Man of the Forest. I've got some some people following me today. Anyway, we're up in the Peak District in Derbyshire and we're going to do some exploring. We've come to a place called Outer Rocks, otherwise known as the Hidden Druid's Cave. Never been here before, let's go and have a look. Okay, so this is um, the Birchover Millennium Stone and apparently it has magic powers. If you crawl through it, you get younger in age. It's like a youth machine. Let's give it a go. Did it work? It has worked. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so we've just walked down this little track past the Druids Inn. And here we are at Router Rocks, which is uh, so, oh, so it's labelled there. So cool, let's go and have a little explore. Some interesting marks in the rocks along here. Oh wow, look, you can go in. Oh. Didn't go very far though. <laughs> Pretty cool though. Pretty cool rock formation. If you go around you can get up a bit higher. Can you get up? Can you get up on top of it? Just holding it up. Oh wow! Got hat. That's pretty cool, oh, isn't it? That's heavy. Oh, that's heavy. Oh. I don't believe you for a minute. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be caves here. There must be more to it. Just seems to keep on going. A little shelter there, you could uh, spend a night under there if you wanted, keep dry. There's an old wall at the top. Maybe there's more of a structure, but there's a, a little room here. Oh, so it's like it's glow in the dark algae there. Oh, I see the spray paint. Hello. Oh, some little steps carved into the rocks here. It's all steps carved in here. And that piece just there in the trees I'm zooming in on, I think that marks the top of the rocks, which is where we're all at. And look at that view. Beautiful view. See for quite far. If you look down here, it's a very strange creature. Look, there's another one. Here's another one. It's trying to escape down this crevice. If we're careful, we could catch it coming out on the other side. Well, it's quite a steep drop, so if you're here with young kids, remember to stay safe, kids and boys and girls. <laughs> so we've just found another little uh, hole in the ground, which we've crawled through. 
This is cool. So there actually are kind of caves. You see these have been chiseled, or these have been worked. Some stones being ex ex extruded from here, quarried. Cool. They're in here. Oh, there's loads of spiders! <laughs> <laughs> You see, this has actually been carved out, look. Oh, that's a, ooh, that's a big spider. Put your torch on it again, so you can see the shadow. Look at that shadow. It's got a, it's got a big spider. There's more here. There's loads. There's more there. There's loads there as well. There's two or three there. Oh, yeah. Creepy spiders. Ooh, how far does it go? It's just this room. Can I just borrow your torch? Yeah. This is awesome. Hey Google, torch off. <laughs> <laughs> what a cool little space. Echo! Echo! <laughs> so that was fun, wasn't it? What do you reckon, kids? Yeah, it was exciting. Something a bit different? Yeah. Fun place to explore. So next, we're going to get back in the car and go and see where we can find next. So we've driven just 15 minutes down the road and we're going to come and look at one of Britain's famous stone circles, Arbolo. I won't feel for long because it's a bit windy, so I apologise for any wind noise. Did I just stand in something? So, just a short walk up the track and through the farm, across a couple of fields, and here we are. This is what it would have looked like. If you want to read the information, pause the video. Stones have actually all been pushed over, I think in the medieval times, because it didn't adhere to the uh, religion, Christianity, then, but unfortunately they're all lying down. And here is the henge, the bank and ditch, circular formation. And they're all of a limestone type rock. So they have corroded quite a lot. So there's our below, 
stone circle over there. And if I turn around, just on the horizon over there, is Jib Hill, which is actually two burial mounds, one on top of the other, and they're about a thousand years apart, according to the interpretation board. If you want to read it, pause the video. Oh, that's pretty cool. So you found this um, jet shale and bone necklace in the barrow, accompanying an early Bronze Age burial of a woman and a child. How cool is that? What a thing to find. That'd be amazing. So it's not quite a silvery hill. It's quite a lot smaller. So go and have a closer look. So it is Jib Hill. It's quite exposed up here on the tops. There's uh, another limestone rock here. With a little bee's nest. Actually honeybees going in and out, out of there. I'm not going to get too close to them. What a beautiful landscape. Next stop, Buxton. Should we go and check in? Let's go and check in. Right, it's the next day and we're up in the High Peak. We're just outside Castleton and it's time for another adventure. Today we're going on a big walk. We're going to go up to Mam Tor and do a circular route. And uh, well, we'll show you if we find anything interesting on the way. Adventure time. So we've walked through Castleton, nice little touristy village, lots of pubs and shops, etc. And the hill in front is Loose Hill. So we're going to go head up there and then we're going to walk around to the left and over there in the distance is Mam Tor, also known as the Shivering Mountain because you can see it's been big landslips so a lot of it is uh, falling away. So a fair few miles to walk, it's a nice day for it, a nice cool breeze. So I thought I'd just stop and point out a couple of things in the landscape. Over there in the centre of the screen it's Peverell Castle. That's the castle in Castleton. If I just pan to the right, that there in the middle of the screen is Winnett's Pass. And we drove through that to get down to Castleton. Beautiful little piece of landscape. So we're quite high up now, that's the last leg up to Lewes Hill. It's worth it for the views. Just stop for a quick drink of water. Beautiful. So we made it to the top. Oh. Between just 60 degree views. Well, there's a nice little plaque here about Lewes Hill, 1,563 feet, which explains how it's open access for people to uh, actually walk up here. And you can pause the video if you want to read that. Right, on with the walk.
We're just putting a few stones back on the wall here. This is a classic dry stone wall. And if you scroll back through my videos, I've actually got a really good dry stone warning tutorial. It's got 5.4 thousand views, but it's good to get to 6,000. So go and give it a watch and give it a thumbs up. Thanks. <laughs> So we're now slowly making our way around to Mam Tor, which is actually an Iron Age hill fort. If I zoom in, hopefully you can see the banks and ditches running from the left to the right and going around the hill. I'll try and give you a close look when we get there. Here we are, just crossing over into the embankment of the hill fort. There's actually two hill forts, dating from the late Bronze Age and also the early Iron Age. Would have been inhabited to about 400 BC. And I reckon there were up to or around about 100 different dwelling, dwellings here of which the platforms can still be seen. <laughs> so I'm now inside the hill fort, pretty much. I'll just take a little walk around this way. See if we can see the banks and the ditches more clearly. See the banks running along here. There we go. Apologies for the wind. Maybe a good walk, nearly at the summit. And then we're gonna go and get something to eat. I'll no doubt show you a view from the top.
So we're now on the return leg, heading back down to Castleton over there for a pub lunch. And that is where we've been. Right to the top of Mam Tor. Oops. <laughs> Nearly fell down. Right, best catch those lot up. Hello, it's day three. Uh, we're back near Castleton and we are going to visit Speedwell Cavern today. But we've got about 55 minutes before the tour starts. So, um, we're just going to go for a little walk, aren't we? <laughs> Camera shy. That one's a little, little heads. Helmet crew. Mm -hmm. So you really have to uh, crouch getting down this tunnel, especially if you're tall. <laughs> We're going to be going on a boat. Cool. Okay, we're on our way. Wow. It's a long tunnel. Now you might be wondering if this part of the tour, why on earth are you travelling down this dark, dingy tunnel with a tour guide you've only just met and one that really does not look old enough to drive this boat? Well, I'm very quickly going to skip over those questions and we'll start the tour. Currently, you are travelling down an old 18th century lead mine. This mine first started in the year 1771, ended in the year 1791. About 20 years for lead mine, really not a lot of time. That's because this one was a financial disaster. The boss at the time put about £14,000 towards the mine itself. It only roughly got about £3,000 back in lead. A loss of £11,000, which might not sound like that much money, but it was a long time ago. Today's cash, that £11,000, would roughly be worth something along the lines of eight and a half million pounds. So as you can tell by the extortion of ticket prices upstairs, we are still trying to make a bit of that money back. <laughs> now very soon at everyone's left hand side will be the first visual part of the tour. Down here it is known as the Little Winster Vein. It's the first vein of lead the miners found. It does have two parts to its name. Little is the actual physical size. It was known uh, to be about two centimetres in diameter when the miners first discovered it, until they dug it out to roughly be about 60 centimetres. This is it here on your left hand side. Now because of the size of it, they couldn't fit a fully grown adult down there, so instead they sent a seven year old boy. He was called Winston. Winston worked down that tunnel about 12 hours a day, seven days a week, only about two hours off on Sunday for church. He had a pickaxe in one hand, a shovel in the other, a bucket round his neck and a candle in his mouth. But this wasn't any ordinary candle and it wasn't made out of wax like we have today. It was made out of a substance known as tallow. If you don't know what tallow is, it's boiled down animal's fat and fire ash. So near on the same ingredients as a McDonald's burger. <laughs> Come up to my favourite parts of the top. This right here is a brick of archway. It doesn't sound very interesting, but there's myths and legends down here involving these bricks, saying so if you touch them, you'll be granted anti aging properties and healing powers. Now, um, I do recommend you touch them. I mean, I do every single day, and they work absolute wonders. Uh, I am 63 years old, so if you do to reach out and touch them at any point, you can do, it's perfectly fine. What we you always give away. Uh, the bricks. <laughs> so we've just got off the boat at the other end and we're here in the cavern. So I'm just 
just looking up. to see down there this cabin just keeps on going we're right in the middle of the hills here the bottomless pit Cheers to Dan, our guide, who was uh, quite entertaining. Don, let's bang your head, Finn. Ow. Ow. Right, well, we've just driven a few miles up the road and we're now at the Monsell Trail. And we are walking along Cheedale. Next to the stream there, the river. Probably the last part of the adventure of exploring around the Peak District. It's a nice shady wooded flat walk and it's this lovely clear brook. Beautiful. And if we're careful we might see one of the creatures of the stream. There's one. Here's the old uh, train line of the Lonsall Trail. It's a very tall bridge. There's a guy up there upsailing. That looks fun. So we found the stepping stones, which go around the uh, overhang here.
So, we went along the River Wye. We had to scramble up this steep bank, you can't see because the leaves. And now we're back on the Monsal Trail. And there's this cool tunnel, Cheetor Tunnel. So we're gonna start heading back towards the car. Cool. That was cool. Right, so I guess this draws this video to an end. Hope you enjoyed our little um, <laughs> adventure around the Peak District. And um, please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this. My name's Rob, I'm Man of the Forest. And, and these, these strange people are still following me. So anyway, see you on the next one. Ciao for now.